Hey guys, what's up? I hope everybody is doing okay. Um, just got a few things to show you guys. Uh, I've been in Spain, so I have a what I call a remnant remnant scheme, but this is a contrived one. Um, it's where I just started spinning using wool and alpaca, um, different colors. Like I have the black, some black alpaca, some brown alpaca. This gray is um, it's, uh, Jacob, and then there's some white wool that's a Cordell mix in there. Um, and I'm going to make a hat, a hat with this um, when I, after I apply it. So I finished that bobbin today, and then I'm almost finished with this bobbin, which I started the other day. And this is just alpaca on this bobbin, different shades of brown. Um, and I'm doing like a dark brown now. So that's what's on this bobbin. And my grandbaby, she is in North Carolina, which is why I'm able to spin more. Because I don't have to worry about, you know, keeping it in environment super safe for her um, so I can't spin when she's here I can't use my needle punches when she's here and here with me so the other thing I'm working on is I have I have too many fleeces <laughs> and too much fiber but I don't have fleeces all my fiber except for two two and some small like some small like three ounce bags or just like samples um, the spin from the lock. All of that, all my fiber has been um, processed. But I do have some fiber that was, a lot of fiber that was given to me that wasn't perfect or people never paid for it and so it was given to me. Um, and so some of that fiber, um, like this is a Cordell but it's not like a, a white. It's a, a more of a yellowish color is is so it's not something that it won't it probably wouldn't take dye well and so I've made I'm making dryer balls from it and um I got enough left to fill up this stocking. I already got these are how many I got on this stocking. So Tomorrow, the laundry, I'll be throwing that in the whites. And um, I'll finish this up tonight so I can throw it in the whites when we do laundry. Um, now, that skein of Malabrigo rasta that I've had for several years, I finally made something with it. I made this bulky hat. And it has this tassel because I wanted to use every piece of this of the yarn that I could and it feels so freaking good oh my god I would love 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 to have a sweater made out of this that would be a, an expensive endeavor so I had two flowers that I made plus stitch flowers that I made and then it's got like the little three strings hanging down and then I did the tassel with what was left I only had like a little piece about that long left and it just feels so good I'm very proud of this hat it's a uh, Three rows of ribbing, and then I get a pearl bump. Then I don't know how many rows is between, it's just random pearl bumps, and then just three rows, and then pearl bumps, and um, three or four rows. I'm not sure, I wasn't counting. I just wanted to use as much of yarn as possible before I got to my decreases, and I was just very happy with how this turned out. So, what I want to do is I want to do another one. And worsted weight yarn, and actually pay attention to what I'm doing, <laughs> and count, um, so that'll be easier for me to duplicate. So I'm real happy about this hat turn now. And then I made some more squares. Uh, I'm working on some purple squares. This is red heart yarn. It was an ombre. I threw the tag away because uh, B ripped it. So I was like, I'm throwing this away since so she's not here. And it's um, different shades of purple. One of those skeins. I got I got this 
when we were in North Carolina um, for my mom's funeral, I bought this thing and um, I actually made a V-stitch scarf from this yarn and because we weren't we didn't we didn't know if the slip would be high enough up because it had a lace panel on the front of the slip but we weren't sure because the mom was very very busty i mean very very busty and, she, and even though she had lost a lot of weight because she was sick she still had those bad boys so um but the slip covered it but and the scarf was ended up being really pretty and the lady wanted to use it so she took and she, it was a circle scarf, and it was going to like hang here, and it had like a, a butterfly brooch that was purple, because purple was my mom's color. And um, the lady took and, since my mom's hands were like this, she placed it over my mom's hands and put the butterfly right on the top of her hands. So her hands were, had the scarf on it, and everybody loved it um, that saw it. And, um, and... I was fussing at my mom because I told her I wasn't gonna make her nothing else, <laughs> and then I ended up having a man end up making something for her for her funeral. Um, so it's been a year, and I'm starting to tear up. It's, it's you know you lose your mama, you lose your mama. So, but um, so yeah, so I'm doing the purple. This is gonna be for bees. Uh, blanket. I still haven't gotten my, I know, you know, because of the, the, the COVID, everything is slowed down. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get my yarn order in with the Sesame Street characters, but at least I'll have all my squares done. Now, with her, each of these squares, I, I have to put a border around them. And so I'm just doing all the squares first, and then I have to decide what color to use for the border. Excuse me. And uh, then once I get the Sesame Street ones and fi finish those, then I can start sewing everything. I can start sewing everything together. And the way I'm going to join mine is I'm going to crochet them together. And this is it. Not sure what happened there. Yes, both of them had eight. My tension must have changed, or the yarn changed. Same size. So, so I'm gonna sew mine together. The way I'm gonna sew mine together is the inside, the inside loops. I don't know if you guys be able to see that. But I always go through the inside loops because it, it makes it look nice and even rather than sewing it like using a whip stitch and stuff. And so when you open it up, it'll, it'll almost look like you put a stitch down between the, the blanket. Um, yeah. So I'm almost finished with this one. I just, this is the eighth round. The eighth. I guess it just played the eighth round. Mine is the, the beginning round, the eighth. See, I count the holes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is the eighth right here. So, this I'm on the final round on this one. And then I'm trying to do as, much, do as much spinning as I can. And then I'll start working on the squares again just when I need a break from the spinning. I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm already. We still got Tour de Fleece coming up. Um, we also have Spinzilla coming up. So I think I think I'm doing I'm, I'm doing pretty good. My skin is peeling big time. I mean big time peeling. I haven't been outside. <laughs> As you can see, I don't have my lovely team. And, um, so my skin is starting to peel. I used to peel like this all the time when I was younger. It's been a while since I peeled like this. So, my husband be picking on me, calling me a lizard. So, yeah. 
that's that's all I got right now. Uh, as I finish the bobbins, I'll show you guys. I mean, look, I got like a big thing of skin pillow. And they also had a metformin, extended metformin recall. I gotta research that to find out exactly why. All they said was bring all your metformin extended release and we're gonna replace it with the regular metformin. Regular metformin, I can't keep it down. As soon as I take the pill within 15 minutes, I'm puking my guts out. For 15 to 20 minutes, I'm dry heaving. My body does not tolerate the metformin well. The extended release, I was doing a lot better with the extended release. Like the first couple of days I took it, I was nauseous, but I kept it down. And then now I'm at the point where it doesn't bother me. So, so yeah, so I got to find out why they're doing the recall. Was it contaminated? Was it not as effective as they thought it would be? Or were people dying from taking it because it wasn't doing well? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, I'm going to let you guys go. As you can see, my dreads. They're, they're, they're growing. It's not as short as it was. But, um, it's nice to get up in the morning and I have to do your hair. <laughs> All I have to do is wet it, smooth it down, which direction I want it to be, and keep moving. I can't wait till it's long. And then I can, like, you know, pull it up and ponytail and stuff like that. But, I mean, I can still, like, twist it all back if I want to, to put in, like, a little twist. Because it is, it is still long. It's just, in the dreads. Um, so yeah, so y'all take care. And uh, if you have any questions, stuff like that, comment, subscribe, spread the word. I'll try. I can't promise it since I, I babysit the baby a lot. And then my other daughter, she's due in July. I'm not sure she's going to make it to July 11th. But she's the one that's only like four foot ten, And she looks like she's about to pop. Like a big bluebird rolling down the street. <laughs> Like a oop a oop when they swallow. <laughs> so yeah, so she's um she likes she's about to pop. So um her baby's due July the eleventh. And my sec my third oldest child was born July eleventh. My husband works for seven eleven. So that number is always playing around in our life, seven eleven. So y'all take care.